the 2021 Formula 1 Imola GP had a main talking point, which was the crash between George Russell and Valtteri Bottas. There are plenty of videos which explain the events leading up to the crash, but today I will try to explain what happened the moment George hit the wet patch. Just a quick gist, the track was wet at the beginning, but as the 20 drivers drove round and round the track, uh, it quickly got dry. But uh, there were wet parts uh, on the track apart from the racing line and everyone had switched to slick tires and Valtteri Bottas was in front of George Russell but George Russell tried to overtake him once he got within the DRS range. The Imola uh, straight where the overtake was happening is not really a straight but there is a slight uh, left hand turn. So Valtteri Bottas ended up going a bit towards the uh, outside and uh, squeezed George Russell but still left him plenty of space. Uh, George Russell committed to going around the outside but in this course he hit a wet patch and he was sent spinning uh, into Bottas and they crashed and according to me it was fairly judged as a racing incident. So today we are going to try and simulate this crash using simulation tools like MATLAB and Simulink. We are going to use a vehicle model and we are going to see why George spun. And also as a fun exercise, we are going to see what would have happened if George had a stability control system like electronic stability control or traction control or torque vectoring. So this is a two-dimensional bicycle model of a vehicle and it's used to analyze the, its cornering behavior. It's called a bicycle model because the left and the right tires are clubbed to form a single equivalent tire. Also, the steering takes place at the center point of the front wheel. There are no vertical dynamics represented, so there are no roll and pitch degrees of freedom. Also, there's no vertical movement of the vehicle and there is no road elevations or road bumps. It is a fairly basic model, but it can predict the dynamics of the vehicle to a pretty good extent. An important character used to judge the cornering behavior of a vehicle is something called the understeer gradient. But what does this mean? Let's say there's a certain steering angle input to the vehicle and this, the response of the vehicle is to yaw. And the steering angle and the speed at which the vehicle yaws is called the yaw rate. The steering angle has a direct influence on the yaw rate of the vehicle. Now the responsiveness of the vehicle is defined as the ratio of the yaw rate to the steering input and this depends on the forward speed of the vehicle, the wheelbase as well as something called an understeer coefficient. Now this understeer coefficient depends on the distribution of lateral forces to the rear and the front of the vehicle. Now we can map how the responsiveness of the vehicle varies with the speed. For safety, you would want the responsiveness to be pretty good at low speeds. But at high speeds, you don't want the vehicle to be too nervous, so it drops off. Now this has an understeer coefficient greater than zero. Another way is to make the responsiveness increase exponentially with speed. This would mean that the vehicle is very responsive at low speeds, but it gets dangerously responsive at higher speeds to a point that there would be some speed called the critical speed at which there is no steering input needed to cause the vehicle to yaw. So your vehicle would be uncontrollable. This has a understeer coefficient less than zero. The last is a linear relationship between the responsiveness and the speed which means that if you increase the speed then the responsiveness would increase linear and this has a understeer coefficient equal to zero so the first vehicle would be understeer the second vehicle would be neutral steer and the third vehicle would be oversteer now, F1 cars are very close to neutral steer characteristics and this is because you want the vehicle to be pretty responsive 
and also you want to be able to generate high lateral forces in your tires. So let's take a look at what Bottas did. So this here is the yaw velocity gain diagram or the responsiveness diagram and the x-axis is the vehicle speed and the y-axis is the responsiveness. So this states that if the vehicle is going at 320 km per hour, uh, the yaw velocity gain must be 24.04 radian per second per radian steering input. Now the uh, steering input I gave was uh, 0.1 radian and uh, forward speed is 320 km per hour. So that must mean that the yaw velocity gain should be something like 2.4 radian per second. And if we see the yaw rate versus time, we see that it is indeed something like 2.4 radian per second. So this means that the vehicle is going to follow a constant radius trajectory and uh, this can be seen in the XY map as a, a left turn. So let's look at George Russell. So George Russell hits the wet patch when he goes alongside Bottas and this causes a sudden decrease in the lateral force to both the front and the rear tires and this affects the lateral force distribution to the front and rear tires which in turn affects the uh, understeer coefficient. Now the, the rear tire loses the lateral force a bit quicker compared to the front tires and this is due to the difference in contact patch of the uh, rear tire and the front tire and this is because the rear tire itself is different compared to the front tire. So the change in understeer coefficient will push the car from a neutral steer vehicle to an oversteered vehicle which has critical velocity of nearly 60 km per hour. So the car is traveling at 320 km per hour much greater than the critical speed which means it's going to yaw violently and this can be seen in this graph that the yaw rate is increasing. So if we see the new XY map we see that they do collide in fact the increased yaw rate when George Russell went in the wet causes him to uh, deviate into the path of Valtteri Bottas. And this is not the most accurate explanation of the crash because there are a lot more factors which come into play like the existence of four tires instead of two and also more uh, there could be more accurate modeling of lateral forces. There could also be more accurate modeling of slip forces but it is still a reasonably correct simulation. Okay. So I wanted to see what would happen if there was a stability control system present in the car of George Russell in this scenario. Uh, in essence, all stability control systems work in this way. There is a certain desired yaw rate which a vehicle must meet, uh, which is proportional to the steering input. And the vehicle then has sensors which measures the current yaw rate of the vehicle. Then it calculates the difference between the desired yaw rate and the current yaw rate and applies a control signal to correct and minimize this error. Now this could either be in the form of uh, breaking an inside wheel or sending a bit of extra power to an outside wheel. Uh, in essence, they all achieve the same thing that they want to reduce the yaw rate error. So the error between the desired yaw rate and the current yaw rate. So here we have uh, the Simulink model of the bicycle model. So this portion is of concern to us right now. Uh, this block gives the desired yaw rate of the vehicle based on the steering input. And for this model, uh, I've just put the desired yaw rate as the same as it would have been if George Russell was driving on a dry line. And here we have the current yaw rate of the vehicle. Uh, once you calculate the difference, there is a PI controller which uh, tells you what is the amount of to uh, torque or moment which you need to correct this yaw rate error. Uh, there's a saturation block which limits the moment such that the frictional bounds of each tires are not exceeded. And based on this, you can correct the behavior of the vehicle and make sure a situation like the crash will not happen. So if we plot the XY plot again, this time 
including the electronic stability control we see that there is uh, no longer an intersection in the path of Bottas and George Russell. So, so it cannot be said that this uh, stability control would be as effective in real life because I am assuming things like uh, infinitely quick response time. I am also assuming a lot of grip available on uh, one of the wheels and I am also assuming that you could send positive power to one wheel and negative power to one wheel like torque vectoring but it still is not impossible for uh, such a situation to be controlled although at 320 km per hour it is uh, going to be pretty tough to control such an incident uh, using uh, electronics so to summarize we analyzed what happened after george russell hit the wet patch the lateral forces in his front and rear tires reduced and it transformed his vehicle from a neutral steered vehicle to an oversteered vehicle whose critical velocity was around 60 km per hour and the car was traveling at 320 km per hour so it was far beyond the critical velocity and this gave rise to a huge yaw rate and uh, thus it led him to suddenly spinning out of control also we saw what a theoretical stability control system uh, could do to prevent this crash by measuring the desired yaw rate of the vehicle against the current yaw rate of the vehicle and applying a control action to minimize this error. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, do check out my other video on my channel where I explain the performance benefits of a mass damper used in the Renault R25 Formula 1 car. Uh, and it's a similar video where I use uh, MATLAB and simulator. Yeah, okay, see you.